Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to day two of European Utilities Week. Um, my name's Chris Pennell. Uh, I'm going to be the chairman for today's session um, on uh, the consumer uh, centricity. Um, so, yeah, so I'm just going to sort of take a couple of minutes just to sort of um, set the scene and then we'll go straight into uh, today's presentations. And we've got a packed agenda. Um, so yeah, so I think we, we've got some really good speakers who've got some really good sort of insight into what, what's sort of um, going on in the market at the moment uh, and how utilities and cities are addressing some of the challenges. Um, I think it's interesting at this market at the moment um, because we're really at a pivotal point. I think um, it changes are reshaping the sort of traditional utility model. Um, climate change has prompted you know, decarbonisation programmes new investment into new generation facilities, technology advancements, driving down costs of renewable energies on, on the IT side, um, computing power has been increasing every couple of years. So, so you know, the amount of data that can now be collected and processed um, has significantly Im improved. And on top of that, we now have sort of uh, machine learning and artificial tools, um, which allow us to sort of interrogate the increasing amounts of data that are being produced. Um, and at the same time, we're increasingly sort of knowing more about objects um, through the sort of development of IoT and the rollout of IoT. Um, so empowered, I guess, by this more information, um, <clears throat> we as, as users um, of these services are uh, increasingly demanding greater transparency um, and, and sort of control and more choice, if you like. Um, at the same time, I guess utilities and cities are sort of rushing to modernise, sort of offered sort of you know, new products, moving away from, I guess, the one-way promotion of products that we've traditionally seen and sort of two-way engagement. So, yes, yeah, so as I say, the marketplace is, is, is witnessing a multi-pronged sort of ch uh, disruption. So the business models, regulatory, innovation, you know, sort of where the energy sources are being developed from. Um, and at the heart of this is very much sort of uh, a customer-centric uh, approach. Um, sort of as sort of we move down the sort of the digital road, um, increasingly sort of models, the utility models are built around sort of um, customers, um, and that means that sort of utilities have to change their business model. We need to embed new business processes, systems, and platforms to deliver sort of a seamless customer experience. Um, and technology will be a, a critical differentiator in this journey. In journey, um, you know, certainly solutions that are based on sort of data analytics, uh, online self-service like type tools, cloud computing, and so on. Um, billing will be another critical area where you expect to see sort of an investment in IT to improve sort of the, the customer experience, social media, um, and so on and so forth. Um, all of these are going to be sort of increasingly sort of critical sort of IT applications in the utility market, which will allow for, for differentiation. But at, at the same time, sort of um, the, this digital premise, if you like, is all based around connected devices, connected objects, connected citizens and individuals. So in, in effect, anything can now become connected. It's, it's connected space, if you like. So, but, but it's far more than just connecting gadgets. And, in, and sort of um, operational technology. And most of us will have a smart device in our pocket, maybe one or two, um, with a um, higher level of, of connectivity capability than we've ever seen before. Um, so this means that we have to fundamentally think different about how we sort of view spaces, how we view sort of um, the way that we interact with, with the customers, with citizens, um, and how we can make those spaces work harder for us, if you like. Because I believe that connected spaces can really change the way that we interact with our, with our world. If you think about sort of offices, um, increasingly you know, we're moving away from sort of um, owning buildings to renting spaces to more dynamic sort of office environment, um, which is, is sort of also a reflection of the different way that we want to work. Um, and so, you know, that's all based on sort of understanding individuals, how they, their usage of those sort of environments and those spaces. And increasingly, that's becoming more sort of smart and more intelligent. So it uses your sort of connected device, your phone, to understand what meetings you've got, where you're going to be. We'll set up the meeting rooms with the environmental controls, lighting and heating and so forth for you, and then switch it off when you leave. 
So increasingly these sort of spaces are becoming much more sort of personalised. But this is all sort of dependent on that connectivity and on the platforms and the protocols to make it work. Um, and I think as, as a result, no one provider can sort of offer all of that. So increasingly, you know, uh, utilities are going to have to work uh, with a broader ecosystem of suppliers um, and uh, interdisciplinary teams as well. So I think what's really interesting about today's sort of topics is that some of the, the, the presentations you're going to see from people who are actually doing some of this stuff are actually sort of experiencing it and, and sort of have gone through some of the initial pain and the barrier and, and overcome some of the barriers. So I think it's going to be, you know, looking forward to, to sort of seeing and, uh, what they've done and how they've overcome those. So that's, that's my waffle done. Um, no more for me for the rest of the day other than sort of to introduce um, the, the speakers as we go through. So I'm going to hand over to the first speaker. Um, the first speaker is Leon Govertz. So apologies for the correct pronunciation of your name. Uh, she's the unit manager of Smart Energy and Built Environment at Energyville, and she'll be talking about the making of the smart city energetic experiences from Europe. Let's just get that up. Brilliant. There you go. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Chairman, for uh, this nice introduction and setting the scene of what's all about. And it's all about consumers and it's about citizens. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, Smart City, what is it about and um, how do we look at it from a consumer perspective? First, let me introduce myself. I'm uh, leading a department, research department in Energyville, which is a research institute based in the eastern part of Belgium on sustainable energy systems for large urban areas. We are with about 300 researchers and we develop new technology, new services, new knowledge in the broader context of sustainable energy and sustainable built environment. And we deliver this knowledge and technologies both to industry and public entities. We work on um, six broad themes um, which are um, technology oriented like uh, the solar um, research topic or power control but also more system and ecosystem oriented like the research we do on buildings and districts, energy strategies and energy markets. So what's a smart city? Everybody knows these figures. By 2050, about 70% of the uh, world's population will live in cities, and these cities consume 80% of global energy, um, although they only take 2% of the Earth's um, surface, they do consume a lot of resources, in, um, are, are consumed in these cities. But of course, cities are also nodes for innovation, and they have the potential to innovate and use technology to make um, the impact on the environment less and contribute to a reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. So what's a smart city? Smart city is about, seat, uh, is about people and technology. So um, smart cities are defined by their intelligence to integrate different technologies on energy, on transport and on ICT to reduce their environmental impact and improve um, the service level and the comfort for its citizens. So from that perspective, citizens are essential and crucial and are central in the concept of what we call smart cities. But of course we know that the urban complexity requires a lot of creativity and innovation and integration. You see here a picture of a typical Belgian city how it looks today and to improve the comfort um, for its citizens while, not, um, while reducing carbon emissions is a great challenge, of course. What we try to do is to bring knowledge into this uh, huge challenge of converting our cities to low carbon districts and um, cities. And so what we build is we build ecosystems on um, data platforms that can be used um, by different stakeholders. It can be used by the citizen itself, but it can also be used by local authorities, by investors, by technology providers. And so this data platform, it um, encompasses all data on building stock, but also on energy um, user behavior, on um, the economics of renovation measures, for example, on the energy performance of buildings, and also personalized and real-time data. 
and based on this ecosystem of data, we can provide advice to different stakeholders, um, like I said before, local governments, technology suppliers, energy utilities, investors, and last but not least, the citizens itself. This uh, picture is an example of a platform that we provide to all Flemish cities, which is also making use of LiDAR data to um, calculate the um, energy performance of the building stock based on the geometrical data and technical data of the buildings. Of course, integration is key. The challenge for decarbonizing our urban environment um, there is no silver bullet to that, so we need to combine different um, technologies and different, uh, in different fields. And sometimes we call decarbonizing our cities and districts like solving a complex energy puzzle. Renewable energy, but from different sources, will contribute to this decarbonization challenge, and we have to manage it in an integrated way. In European Commission is supporting a lot of living labs to demonstrate such integrated technologies. And I put one example on the slide. The Citizen Project is a project which we coordinate um, in Grenoble and Amsterdam where a lot of um, techniques are combined. Renovation measures, for example, are very important because if the hardware of a city is obsolete, it's um, useless to make, it, to make it smart. So making, um, renovating the building stock with, in combination with the district heating and cooling network, smart grids, virtual power plants, um, home uh, batteries, vehicle to grid solutions, it's all there and it's all being demonstrated in this living lab. And that's what we want to do. We want to maximize learnings. There are a lot of projects ongoing on integrated technology, on smart cities, which have the aim to decarbonize the um, urban environment. And that's why um, we are gathering the data on behalf of the European Commission. We are managing a platform which gathers all the data on um, smart city living labs. Um, to make sure that we maximize the learnings from these living labs, that we share knowledge um, across Europe, across European cities, and that citizens and all stakeholders can found, find information on proven technology and solutions. So this is the website, the link to the website, and uh, feel free um, to visit it. Um, it's an exciting database. It contains um, 52 um, projects, European projects, on 162 locations in Europe. And um, all the data of these different projects are there. And what's most important is that all the data are there, but we are um, analyzing the data, of course, and translate it into learnings and to support better evidence-based policy. So here you see the KPI framework that will be available on the website. And for all projects, it will um, collect data. It will showcase um, the stories of the different Living Lab projects. It will give policy recommendations. Um, but most important, it will um, give information on KPIs, KPIs on the energy system, on the sustainability, on carbon emissions, on uh, transport system, on ICT used, on citizen citizen involvement and so on and it will show these KPIs to make sure that we can compare different measures different locations different circumstances across all these living lab uh, projects um, which are going on in Europe so um, the smart city information system also tells stories because it's important that it's not only um, a story of technology and KPIs, but of course people live in these cities and they, um, a city is alive when we can story stories about it. And so there are narratives about all the smart cities um, to make sure that we can find the links between different projects that we uh, identify shared, shared challenges and solutions. Um, also that we understand the human element, we can't uh, capture everything in data and qualitative depth is also important in um, what's the smart city all about. So feel free to look at our website. Um, if you want to know more about the research we are doing at Energyville, you're more than welcome at our booth in Hall B. And we are happy, um, our researchers and colleagues are happy to share more of our insights on smart cities and built environment. Thank you very much. Um, 
Yeah, should I take? Uh, yes, yeah. So we, we we do have time for. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Lee. We do have time for some questions. If anybody's got a question, they would put like to put. Clean about anything she's talked about. Everybody, morning. No, too early in the morning for questions. <laughs> but, oh. Um, they are all over the different European um, countries. Um, so this is the database, um, and these are yeah. You see the spots on the map. So all countries are represented, and it's on 162 locations all over the EU. Yeah. Are, are there any more questions? You get to talk uh. to to this very nice uh, <laughs> microphone. Um, are there any more questions for Lean? Otherwise, no? okay, brilliant. Thank, Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so um, I'm just waiting for the uh, next speaker. Um, so we're going to take a couple of minutes break and then we'll, we'll come back for, for the next um, speaker. Thank you.